There is a new man in the DMV, and his name is Dan Quinn. He's the commander's new head coach, and he's got his work cut out for him as he and the front office begin to build their staff. We'll take a closer look at what it might look like. And the hottest name in sports, Caitlin Clark, will be in College Park, Maryland this weekend, facing the Terps in front of a sellout crowd. We'll look ahead to Saturday's big game. Plus, it's Friday night, so who's ready for some high school hoops? We've got all the action from several of the biggest games around the DMV. That and much more coming up right now on Game Night. The only seven-day-a-week sports show in the DMV. From DC News Now, this is Game Night. Oh, How you doing, man? To I see that. Oh, I heard you. Oh, hey. your uncle. Yeah. You want to talk talking trash right? about? Uh... And look what happened. Oh. <laughs> what? He scored on you that week one game. That is Aiden Diggs standing <laughs> up to Sauce Gardner at the Pro Bowl in defense of his uncle Stephon Diggs. Everybody needs someone that will defend them like, like a good nephew, right? I <laughs> hope you guys would defend me like that, honestly. Awesome. I think we would. I think we would. One of the well, best corners in the league. <laughs> well, you got to love that. Welcome in to game night. He's Jake Rahm. She's Brandy Flores. I'm Alex Fulham. Thank you so much for joining us. And yesterday was a busy day, so we're trying to take it all in now. Just over 24 hours ago, the Washington Commanders finally got their guy. New head coach Dan Quinn looks like he's already getting to work, too. He was actually spotted at the East West Shrine Bowl in Texas. And it's no secret that Quinn is a defensive minded head coach. He spent his entire coaching career focused on defense including many years as a defensive line coach. Earlier, I spoke with former Washington defensive end Andre Carter, who got his start in his career in San Francisco, where he was coached by Dan Quinn. Carter's rookie year also happened to be Quinn's first year as an assistant in the NFL. Kind of look at just uh, Dan Quinn's you know, pedigree. I mean, obviously, he had a great defensive line. You know, uh, I, I hate to say great defensive line with Dallas because that's those are enemy. <laughs> that's our enemy. But also, you know, the times in Atlanta, but also the times in Seattle. He'll continue to build off that. He'll, he'll bring in the right guy for the job and slowly build from the ground up. Yeah, well, meanwhile, Dan Quinn already working to put together his coaching staff over the past 24 hours. One name has repeatedly come up in reports of potential commander's defensive coordinator candidates. That man is the Cowboys defensive passing game coordinator and secondary coach Joe Witt Jr., who spent the 2020 season with Atlanta when Quinn was the head coach there and then followed him to Dallas when Quinn was hired as the Cowboys defensive coordinator. Witt followed as for the commander's pending offensive coordinator hire it looks like one reported candidate will not be coming to washington to most people's dismay in the dmv as the new orleans saints are planning to make 49ers passing game specialist clint kubiak their new oc and when the with the niners playing against the kansas city chiefs in the super bowl in nine days a deal cannot be finalized before that date so in just a few minutes we're going to chat with craig hoffman from the team 980 as we dive deeper into the commander's looming oc hire all right, heading into the last week, and the Baltimore Ravens had their sights set on winning the AFC Championship and advancing to Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. But instead, they find themselves reflecting on what could have been as Coach Harbaugh held his season-ending press conference earlier today. In many ways, the Ravens had a pretty historic season, especially on the defensive side of the ball, which proved dominant for most of the year. As for the offense, quarterback Lamar Jackson played pretty well, well enough to become a favorite to win NFL MVP this season, and the team as a whole earning the AFC's top seed. But those accomplishments were overshadowed by a 17-10 loss to the Kansas City Chiefs last Sunday at home. Coach Harbaugh says despite the disappointing finish, there's a lot to look forward to heading into next season. We all should be excited about where we're going, you know, and what's in front of us and what we're building here. And then we're challenged by the things we got to overcome. You know, there's always, there's always things that you lose and you've got to make up for and find a way to even prove on. We did a great job of that last year. I hope we can do even better this year. We're going to hit the hardwood now. The Wizards looking to pick up their third win in their past four games. That is not something we get to say a lot, so glad to hear it. Hosting the Miami Heat this evening, Kyle Kuzma. Check this out, rolling up to cap one in full fashion per usual. Pick this up just before halftime. Wiz up by three, Corey Kispert. He's going to open the doors to the bank. It's open. Knocks down the tray. Fast forward to the fourth. Down 12 with four minutes to go. Jordan Poole, he's going to steal it. Up ahead to Kispert. And Corey's taking this one to the hoop for the slam. 
giving Washington a spark, but the Wizards, they're unable to ignite a comeback against the Heat. You get it? They fall by a score of 110-102. Kispert coming off the bench to lead all scores with 26 points. Good game for him, adding four rebounds and two assists. Over to hockey, the 2024 NHL All-Star Weekend is here, and the Washington Capitals are being represented by their lone All-Star selection, Tom Wilson. This is Wilson's second All-Star Game appearance. He had the fastest goal in the history of the All-Star Game back in 2022. He scored just 13 seconds into the three-on-three -three tournament, and this year's event has a special meaning for Wilson as he returns to his hometown of Toronto for the weekend. Obviously, it's a pretty cool full circle moment to be back here, so it's it's been something I've been looking forward to. and. Um, just hanging with all the guys. I mean, that's always a highlight for me, getting to see guys that you've crossed path, paths with over the years or guys you haven't met. And obviously the, the superstars from around the league, a lot of great guys. As we get closer to the NFL draft, Maryland quarterback Talia Tunga Viola looking to improve his draft stock. Talia looking pretty good in last night's East West Shrine Bowl, the Big Ten passing record holder completing 9 of 14 passes for over 150 yards, including one highlight deep pass. Also rushed in another score in this one. Of course, he's hoping to join his brother, Miami Dolphins QB Tua Tunga Viola in the NFL. Many experts predicting Talia as a day three pick in the draft. And in less than 24 hours, one of the biggest names right now in all of sports will be playing at the Xfinity Center in College Park as the Maryland women's basketball team hosts number three, Iowa. That's right, Caitlin Clark is coming to town. She's been drawing huge crowds throughout the country, just about everywhere she goes. Clark enters Saturday night's game at number two on the all-time women's college basketball scoring list, just about over 100 points away from number one, too. And the Terps, they'll be tasked with trying to slow her down. We beat UConn last year here, and uh, I don't know. I think it was close to a sellout, but um, the energy is electric when you have uh, an environment like us with uh, the best six fans in the country and to have fans like ours. So that's going to be that extra boost that you need in a 40-minute game. All right, so Caitlin Clark coming to town. I know we're all excited to see, here, her, see her here. I mean, just how cool is it that she's going through all these places packed houses, everybody's trying to get autographs. I mean, they told me, Marilyn said, that it's been sold out since December, this game. Yeah, and just to get an overview for everyone, how many seats is that? That's 17,950 tickets sold. That is incredible. Wow. And Caitlin Clark has been all over the country, not just in Iowa. They almost she almost sold out where the Hornets play which is the Spectrum Center which is over um, which is over 900 miles almost a thousand miles away from where Iowa City is in Iowa so she is taking the world by storm and it's all for that seeing young girls look up to somebody doing something so spectacular and it's truly inspiring you know I always watch first take in the morning and Stephen A Smith always says that she is the girl version of Steph Curry I wouldn't even compare her to Steph Curry. Just compare her to herself, Caitlin Clark, and what she's been able to accomplish. Unfortunately, it would be nice to see her break the all-time NCAA uh, points scoring career, points scoring thing here this weekend. Unfortunately, I think she's 100 points away, so unless she goes Will Chamberlain, it's not going to happen. We know the Maryland women's basketball team has been struggling. Opportunity to pull off an enormous upset on Saturday. Of course, we'll have the coverage of that tomorrow. Well, coming up on the show now, though, we've got a full slate of high school basketball from across the DMV. Those highlights coming up next on Game Night. Welcome back into Game Night. The Game Night crew got out to eight high school basketball games all over the DMV tonight. We start in Alexandria, ranked matchup between WCAC foes Gonzaga and Bishop Ireton. Let's get to these highlights. Steve Turner, he has his team humming at the right time down the stretch here. Winners of four straight. Ireton, though, looking to change that. It's the big man, Matthew Mena, top of the key three, gets the crowd going. Eagles, though, dialed in after that. Derek Dixon to Christian Gerdak. Nice kiss off the glass for two later in the quarter. It's Dixon getting the bounce here for three. Gonzaga in the lead. Dixon involved in everything early in this one. Dishing it out here wide open. William Harper knocking down the corner three. Eagles getting the win. Tight fashion though. Final score 54 to 52. We had a top 15 matchup in girls basketball over in Prince George's County between number seventh ranked Elizabeth Seaton and 11th ranked Bishop Ireton. This one poised to be an instant classic between two top schools in the DMV. Let's get into it off the inbound. Kalia Murphy gets it off the glass and in. 
Now for the Cardinals. Nyla Brooks from way downtown. Bam! Sinks it. How about Teresa Hagens Jr. taking this one herself? Gets a driving layup to fall. Road runners are going to be quick in transition, though. Alicia Newell gets the bucket and the foul. Count it. But it would be an upset as Bishop Ireton is going to go on to win this one 70 to 60. What a close matchup. All right, let's head to the district. Another ranked matchup. Two ISL foes. Murray hosting Potomac School in D.C. The Frogs looking to make it three in a row. The Panthers looking to get back in the win column. Murray getting things going here in the first. It's London Liley nailing the triple from deep range. Man, Caitlin Clark much? A little bit. Let's go to the other end, though. Off the inbound, Zoe Missilwiz. Mid-range, buckets, back and forth we go. This game was like it all, the, all day. Kennedy Austin, coast to coast, gets the bucket in the paint, but moments later, the very next possession later, Zora Burl is going to get the bucket of her own. The entire game back and forth, like I said. Potomac School, though, pulling out the win 65-61. to 61. All right, so we checked in on the WCAC, the ISL. Why don't we go to the IAC now? Good matchup in Montgomery County. Georgetown Prep looking to pick up a win at home, taking on St. Albans. The Bulldogs down in this one, though, by double digits. Jalen Wills trying to will him back into it. Pulls up and hits, gets the shot to go in traffic. But here come the Little Hoyas. Great ball movement here. Carter Berg McLean gives to Rulian Stewart. Stewart with the nice moves, lays it in the cup. Prep up 16 after that. Then Stewart is going to come up with the steal, picks it off. He's going straight to the hoop, lays it in. Georgetown Prep runs away with this game. They beat St. Albans 66 49. All right, back in Virginia, it's the Battle of the Birds in Alexandria. Doubleheader between Edison and Hayfield. We're going to start with the girls game. The top two teams in the National District squaring off for the second time in just a week. Eagles trailing in the first half. How about going to three? Kennedy Marshall, the sophomore Edison, down just three points. Hayfield, though, on the move. Alexis Cox, mid-range is good. Hawks maintaining their small lead early on, and they're going to continue to add to it. It's Christina Carter up the baseline, physical basket, good. No foul, she's asking, but here comes Edison. Kennedy Marshall once again. She couldn't miss a three while it was there. Bang! Eagles led by four at the half. Guess what? They're going to win 53 to 37. Could they make it two for two, Edison? The boys game, the defending class six state champs, Hayfield hosting Edison and leading Edison early. They add two at the pass to the corner. Wide open, Alexander McFarlane nailing the triple. Hawks up nine, Eagles starting to climb back, though Gavin Loggins a three of his own. That's how you climb back into it. They would need a lot more, though. This shot denied by Owen Potterberg. On the other end, Phoenix card, and it's an ace of spaces. Ace of spades, I should say, nails the triple. All Hayfield, let's cap it off with a dunk. Parker Cage, everyone's going crazy. Hawks win this one, 74 to 46. All right, let's head back into Maryland. We're checking in on a good rivalry matchup in Montgomery County. Wooten putting together a solid season, visiting Churchill tonight in Potomac. And Bulldog student section representing as usual. Pick this up first half. Melky Jonah steps back, knocks down the deep two. Close game in the second quarter. We're going to go down to the other end. It's Wooten swinging that ball over to the right. Taj Smith hits the three. That's good. Then still in the first half, Chuma. Achafusi is going to give it, get it back. He's going to convert the bucket down low. Wooten, though, coming away with the win in this one. They beat Churchill 64 to 55. Over to Prince George's County for a girls basketball matchup between number 19th ranked CH Flowers and Suitland. At the half, Suitland trailed 27 to 17 off the inbound. Jaguars were going to get to London Miller, who puts it in for two. Then how about this? Ava Redmond. Gets the offensive rebound and hits the mid-range jumper. Right place, right time. Jaguars are rolling. Suitland on offense now. Zoriana de la Cruz finding room, hits her shot. Redmond makes this one from the top of the key as Flowers will take the win as they remain undefeated on the season, beating Suitland 48 to 31. Impressive to stay undefeated, guys. And a great slate of basketball tonight, but I cannot wait for Caitlin Clark tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Still thinking about Caitlin Clark. A lot of players doing Caitlin Clark impressions tonight. Yeah. Well, coming up on the show, Craig Hoffman from the Team 980 joins the show as he talks with Brandy about the Dan Quinn hire and who Quinn might pick as his offensive coordinator. That's next.
Welcome back to the show. As the commanders selected their new head coach, Dan Quinn, new questions have arise, like who will or should hire the team hire as a defensive and offensive coordinators. I asked Craig Kaufman from the Team 980 what he thinks of the commander's choice at head coach and where the team should go from here. I think it's hard to be like, oh, it's great. But I, I think we're also reminded that there's no such thing as a home run coach hire. Like it is, you're either going to deal with someone who's never done the job before or with someone who has done it before and got fired. Like there really isn't a third option. I guess rarely there is the guy, you know, I guess the closest is even like an Andy Reid who by the end of Philadelphia, they were ready to let him go, but he ran, kind of ran his course there and just kind of needed a fresh start. And I, and I think in some ways that's what you're hoping Dan Quinn is. Dan Quinn was a guy who had a lot of success in Atlanta uh, and then didn't have as much success once some things changed and they obviously had a, a pretty significant failing in the Super Bowl. But he's also a guy that was up 28-3 in the Super Bowl, and that's that's pretty good too. Um, I, I I like Dan a lot as a football coach. I think the structure here is way better than it was for him in Atlanta, and certainly what it's been for Rivera the last four years, and all of those things I think give this team a chance to be really good in the next you know over the next five years as they build it up and hopefully are competitive sometime midway through that range. When it comes to picking a new OC, do you think they'll go with someone who has more experience or an up and coming? Um, coach, younger coach on an offensive staff who may not be the OC somewhere else, but has potential to reach those sites and take a first round, second pick quarterback and develop them to be somebody really great. I think all options are on the table because Quinn is an experienced coach. Like obviously because he's experienced doesn't mean you can't hire someone else who has experience, but it does mean you have a little bit of room to bring on a younger coach. I also think that, that the staff needs to be kind of holistic, right? You need to have somewhere on staff if you have a let's say it's Clint Kubiak the 36 year old passing game coordinator who's next up in that position in San Francisco the same position that gave us Bobby Sloak the same position that gave us Mike McDaniels uh, who have gone on to obviously bigger and better things head coach and offensive coordinator of the Dolphins and the Texans you then bring in some kind of senior assistant who has done the OC stuff before or you know can you pull Daryl Bevel from Miami to be your quarterback's coach probably not same position but some Someone like that who has the experience and that needs to be on both sides of the ball. You want a mix of youth, new, innovative ideas, younger, challenging your way of thinking and some people who maybe asked those questions when they were younger, found out the answers and we can skip some of the experiments. Like you need that balance on staff. And I'll say this, Brandy, I think Quinn, for some reason, is getting a lot of talk about his staff in a way that people seem to dismiss with other coaches. If they had hired Mike McDonald or even Ben Johnson, those staffs would have been just as important as they are for Dan Quinn. It's really important who your staff is in the NFL. And if you want to know who the best teams are, figure out who the best coaching staffs are. And so, yeah, this stuff is super important. I'm not trying to diminish it, um, but it is... You know, it, it's just as important for Dan as it is for anyone else. And luckily, I think he really understands that because when he let his staff slip and took a couple of risks in Atlanta, things went sideways for him and ultimately resulted in him getting fired. He is Craig Hoffman. You can catch him on the Hoffman Show every Monday through Friday from 4 to 7 p.m. over on the Team 980. All right, for once, I think I kind of agree with Craig Hoffman <laughs> on all of his topics that he talked about, but mostly the OC thing. A young, talented guy. Think of Dan Quinn, what he had in Atlanta. Kyle Shanahan, look where he went. Not saying everyone hits like Kyle Shanahan will. I think someone like, unfortunately, Clint Kubiak, but he won't be here probably. Mm -hmm. But someone young like that that can take a chance on that could really uh, go well with a quarterback that they take in number two. I agree with him, too. I, and I've said this many times. The point is the NFL is all about the situation that you're in. So mm -hmm. if you have a good owner, a good GM, a good head coach, a good roster, a good staff, you're going to win. So... We'll just have to see what they put together. But if, if they go up 28 to 3 in the game, I say just start <laughs> start running the ball. All right, maybe score one more time and then just kick a field goal. Just get past that 28. Anyway, coming up on the show, we're going to see uh, Brandy can pull off a win tonight, hopefully. No, maybe Jake will have a chance. We're going to quiz we them tied on last time. Billboard Top Music. Oh, okay. The last several years. That's coming up next. Welcome back into game night. Jake and Brandy going head to head, Billboard top music. So let's get right into it. These are songs that have been in the top five in the last several years, okay? Okay. We're gonna start off first, and yeah, I'm gonna give you the song. You have to say who sings it, okay? Okay. 
Moscow Mule. Bad Bunny. Brandy. There we go. Good job, Brandy. <laughs> Thought maybe Jake would get that one. Um, <laughs> Kill Bill. Says a. Dang. All right. Almost got it. Vampire. Olivia Rodrigo. Oh, no. All right. Well, I think this one doesn't work, so don't even try <laughs> to buzz it. Um, heat waves. Uh, glass animals. Oh God. All right. <laughs> Shivers. Dogs. Ed Sheeran. Why are you getting mad at me? <laughs> I'm not mad. Um, paint the town red. Oh, Brandy. Good so job. Slow. Did I skip one? No. Okay. Levitating. Oh. Dua Lipa featuring. We don't need to know who it okay. features. <laughs> Blinding lights. Weekend. Wait. The weekend. That's not, did that song come out this? It's oh, last it several years. years. Duh, 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 duh. The box. Roddy Rich. Oh my All right, God! I uh, about Brandy, that you're song. gonna do the rest of them. I'm gonna <laughs> right, we'll see make my way back. All right, to yeah, them. let's see it. God's plan. God's plan. Drake. Drake. <laughs> he walked away and said it. All right. Well, I think that's a Brandy win. No, we'll give it to Jake. Just to, just to make Jake feel good for that one. <laughs> Look at um, that score. That I really looks thought, great. I'm Brandy, I really thought you had that one. Jake must listen to the radio more than I do. Jake must listen to the radio more than I do. I live with a, my wife's a music musicaholic, if that's a thing. <laughs> All right. Jake, Rob, Brandy Flores, producer Devin, and the crew behind the scenes. Have a great night, everybody.